Welcome to Trinity to Go, a ministry of Trinity Lutheran Church in downtown Bismarck. I'm Pastor Mark Narum, and it is my honor and pleasure to be able to welcome you this day to a time of worship. So we gather in this week of Reformation, worshiping in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are in the gathering area between the sanctuary and the community center here at Trinity Lutheran. I thought it would be a great day to stand in front of this piece of artwork that together as a congregation we made at the beginning of the program year on Rally Sunday, which is in early September. This year, we are focusing on being rooted in God's promises. No better time to show that off than on Reformation Week, rooted in the promise that God continues to speak to us through the Word of God, continuing to speak to us through the power of the Holy Spirit, showing us that we are alive through Christ. Will you join me this day as we gather together for a word of prayer? Sovereign God, you turn your greatness into goodness for all the people on earth. Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom and make us desire always and only your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Our psalm this day is Psalm 46. This is text that helped Martin Luther think and then write the song, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, though the, water, though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea, though its waters rage and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of the day. The nations rage and the kingdoms shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the works of the Lord, what desolation God has brought upon the earth. Behold the ones who make war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shield with fire. Be still then, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in all the earth. The Lord of, God, the Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our stronghold. A reading today from Romans, the third chapter. Paul's words stand at the heart of the preaching of Martin Luther and other Reformation leaders. No human being make themselves right with God through the works of the law. We are brought into a right relationship with God through the divine activity centered in Christ's death. This act is a gift of grace that liberates us from sin and empowers our faith in Jesus Christ. A reading from Romans chapter 3, beginning with the 19th verse. Paul writes, Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law of the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. Since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by God's grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sin previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? 
No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. Our gospel in this Reformation week is from chapter 8 of the Gospel according to John, beginning with the 31st verse. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son has, makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus the Christ. So we react differently to gifts that are given to us. Sometimes we react with great joy, and I'm thinking specifically of young people in the midst of this. If, if a young person has been asking for a Nintendo Switch or maybe the latest cell phone, when they get it, they have great joy. They dig into that piece of electronic equipment, learning everything that it can do, diving in great joy. But let's be honest, there are also some times that we receive gifts, and while we may be thankful, we're like not overly excited, kind of meh. Maybe the gift is socks. Now, the truth is, I've gotten old enough where there's not a lot of things that are very exciting that I ask for when it's my birthday or even at Christmas. A pair of socks is just fine. They are utilitarian. I've probably got a drawer full of socks that are getting a little bit thin in the heels, maybe even some holes. So it's a fine gift to get, but it's not overly exciting. Today, we gather around in hopes, at least for me, in hopes that you can hear a word about an incredible gift that you have been given that leaves you with so much joy and excitement that you might not be able to contain yourself. But the truth is, we've known about this gift, most of us, for so long that we may just take it for granted. What's the gift? It's the gift of Jesus Christ. It's his death and resurrection for your sake, for my sake, for the sake of all of humanity. So we are gathering on Reformation Sunday, and this is not a day that we fall at the feet of Martin Luther and worship him. Not at all. Instead, it is a day that we remember the incredible freedom that Luther re-experienced. Now remember, Luther is this Catholic monk trained as a theologian, but as he reads the Bible, he finds nothing but an angry God who continues to convict him of his sin again and again and again. Luther knows his failings. He knows he falls short. Luther can find no relief to the guilt of what he does and what he thinks until one day he's reading in Romans. And that's why on Reformation Week, we always read from the book of Romans. Because in that book, Luther rediscovers this incredible joy of freedom. Freedom which comes from God through Jesus to humanity. Freedom that is given not because we deserve it, not because we've done something, but because God is holy. And Luther can't be quiet about it. Luther begins to shout everywhere he possibly can about God's gift of grace and mercy and love. This gift, this gift 
of a God who loves us so much that he would give his only begotten son this gift should leave us with joy and excitement and ready to sing from the top of our voices. This week, we also gather with a group of young people as they affirm their baptisms. They say what happened all of those years ago around a baptismal font where they were splashed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. They're saying, Mom and Dad, what you did then was right. Sponsors, thank you. Now this is my faith and I am ready to walk forward with it. Wednesday, we gathered with all of these young people and one by one they got up and they shared their faith statements. Now the truth is, it terrifies them. It terrifies them to have to stand in front of a group of people and we don't do it because we want to terrify them. We do it because we want to hear their confession. We want to hear their take on faith. And I've got to tell you, I was blown away. Part of what this process of writing a faith statement does is it makes a young person sit and think. Think about what they've been talking about for three years in confirmation classes, all of those years of Sunday school. Think about sitting together with their friends and what they've wrestled with. Here are a few of the things that stood out to me as they talked. A number of our students talked about the questions that they wrestle with. And I love that. You see, I don't believe that God just gives us answers that are black and white. The Bible is not one book. It is a collection of books of all sorts of different kinds of writing. And there are pieces in the Bible that really wrestle with one another. So, is there any surprise that we wouldn't wrestle about what God is up to and what's happening in our lives? And what I want you to hear on this Reformation Sunday and what I try to help all of our young people hear is that questions are never a problem. Our God is big enough. Our God is strong enough that God can handle our toughest questions. To ask a question does not mean that you are unfaithful. As a matter of fact, I think questions can drive us to think deeper, to go back to scripture, to read more and think more and pray more. I don't think that the answers are just going to drop into our lap, but it's in the process, in all of this process of reading, talking, thinking, that God begins to reveal God's self to us. We had a number of students in the midst of their faith statements talk about how they believe that nothing can separate them from God. Some of these young people have been through extremely difficult situations in their young lives already. And they are able to confess that God is with them, that they have a sense that God is with them. Another young person said that praying gives her a sense of hope. I love that line because there are altogether too many times when we feel hopeless, alone, wondering what the path ahead is going to look like. But entering into conversation with God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is present with us by the power of the Holy Spirit, can give us calm in the midst of the storm, can give us hope to hold on to. One of the students in the midst of their faith statement read, I believe God has given me the gifts to care for other people. I've seen that young man. 
I've seen him in action caring for other people. I don't think he's wrong. But I am so thankful that he is recognizing it and realizing it. And I hope he begins and continues to pray around the idea of how God might take that gift that's been given and use it in the midst of his life in the years ahead. Whether it's what he does in a professional life in the years ahead or in family life. Because all around us, this world needs people who can care for others, who aren't afraid to go up and wrap their hands around the shoulder of someone who's grieving or feeling alone or frightened. We need people who will walk with us. These young people who shared their faith statements are a gift of God. They're a group of people to be taken seriously. They're a group of people that we need to work hard to make a place for in our church and listen closely to. So here we are. Reformation Sunday and in the midst of worship we'll have baptisms and we'll have affirmation of baptism and we'll have Holy Communion and in the midst of all of it. My prayer is that we find great joy in this gift that has been given by a God who loves us. Loves us to the moon and back. Loves us to the cross and back. Loves us in spite of the fact that often we are unlovable. And yet, God loves us. And wants to be our God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Would you join me in prayer? Holy God, we do give you thanks for the blessings that come from your hand. This day, we thank you for the gift of your son, his life, death, and resurrection, and the abundant life that flows through him to us. Lord, help us to see your law, your rules, your commandments as that which convict us show us our sin, and yet drive us back to the love that comes from you alone. Holy God, walk with us. We pray, Lord, that you would be with those who are grieving, or sick, or lonely. We lift those names to you that are on our hearts right now. Lord, in a world bent on prayer, we pray that you would bring peace. Lord, these things and whatever else you see that we need, we lift in your holy name. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, I do have a couple of announcements that I want to share with you. First and foremost, I'm going to put up our address. Your offerings, your tithes are so important. They allow the ministry here to continue. The address allows you to drop a check in the mail to Trinity Lutheran Church, and that means that our ministry of leading worship, our ministry of church school and Sunday school, our ministry of confirmation, our ministry of walking with people who are brokenhearted can continue. Thanks for your generosity and for all that you do. Brothers and sisters in Christ, a couple of other things that are happening here. Wednesday the 30th, Regular worship, but we're also inviting all of the kids to come in their costumes to show off what they will be wearing on All Hallows' Eve. So come out. Church Council will be serving dinner that evening. It'll be hot dogs, macaroni, and cheese. Uh, come, partake, have fun. A special gift will be given to all of the kids as well after church school. Know that there's always a place for you in church school or Sunday school. If you don't have a church home and you want to get your kids involved, it's not too late. Bring them on by. We would love to have them involved in church school. 
There are a lot of other things going on here at Trinity Lutheran. Next Sunday, November 3rd, we will gather for All Saints celebration. We'll be remembering especially those who have died in this past year, but there'll be the ability as well for you to remember others who have died in previous years. Come and join with us. Come grab hold of the gift that we get in this trust and belief that God has hold of us. If you'd like to see more announcements or other things that are going on at Trinity Lutheran, go to trinitybismarck.com. You can open up our bulletin or you can see our newsletters there as well. Now receive the blessing. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and always. Amen. I'm Pastor Mark Narum here at Trinity Lutheran in downtown Bismarck. We are so glad that you have found your way to worship with us this day. We hope that someday you'll drop by and worship with us in person. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.